get, because I'm sure she won't say it herself, that she just got a starred purpose review. <laughs> His work, I have admired for so these many years as well, is, is really wonderful. And I want to also just offer a huge thanks to Linda Parsons, who is the poetry editor of, of Madville Publishing and who has helped to shepherd these the, the poetry books uh, into uh, into the world, including I think Susan, don't you have one you coming out? out? May yeah, have next year. it may have next year. So the next book launch <laughs> of Susan's you can attend. Will that will be a poetry launch, which is wonderful. Um, so, and, and of course, thanks to all of you coming out. So I'm reading from Heartbreak Tree, which is, is my new book. Um, and it is described, which means I had to describe it since, you know, <laughs> people want to know what a book is about. Uh, it's like it's poetry, it doesn't have to be about anything, but yes, it does. And, and I've, I've talked about this book as being, um, really about the intersection of gender and place in Appalachia. And I think in many ways it is. You know, it's, it's maybe about some more things too, but it is uh, it is about my growing up in Eastern Kentucky and about my family history, particularly my, my maternal family history and all kind of the complications um, for better and worse from growing up uh, within that very complex world. So the poems that I'm going to read um, are uh, there's a, there's two sequences of poems actually that have each each sequence has its, has the own it's, each poem has a, in the sequence has the same title which made it easy like to write <laughs> to title the poems um, that punctuate the book and one is the one I'm not going to read is called Letter to Myself 15 which is uh, is that. Um, but the, the sequence I will read, each of the poems are called story. And so, in a way, in each poem, uh, the family or other, or life's, usually family story, sort of at the center of the poem, kind of speaks to, um, to other things that are going on within, within the book and within the lives that it, that it, tell, that it tells. And so I think that just, um, that there'll be a little, a little through line, perhaps, um, within within these poems. So I'll start with the first poem in the book, story. I don't mean to be ungrateful. I was bred for wanting more, the way a racehorse is bred for the wind scent. Those impossible legs like winged twigs that will snap in a high wind. What moves us onward is the same sometimes as what breaks us to the ground. Here's a story about my grandfather that I don't like to tell. How he found a World War II deserter's bundle tucked inside a cave. How he kept the money then turned the guy in for a $15 reward. I'm not saying our people weren't hungry. We were always hungry. I'm not saying who my grandfather was is who I am. What my mother wanted was to be far away from where she started. What my father wanted was to begin again. I'm telling you, the hardest thing I've ever had to do is to stop wanting what I already had. Story. My mother said she never asked again who her oldest brother's father was. Granny didn't want to talk about it. That's all we needed to know. So I made stories in my head of someone kinder than my grandpa, his lips not folded thin inside a nighttime scruff of peppered gray. I wanted that comfort for her, if not in life and memory of a silken tangle of flesh hidden between tall rows of corn back in Virginia where her people stayed. She never went back home. Not even after Grandpa died and she finally cut off her waist-length hair, let her daughter give her a soft perm, let her daughter give her a home perm, soft curls around her neck. Years later, almost everybody did, my aunt told me that old story. 
A widowed father stumbled drunk, grizzling himself into his daughter's bed. Her name was Etta. Before I knew her, ten children had torn through that secret place her father had claimed. Story. When I was a kid and lived just a county or two up Kentucky Route 15 from that place my mother once called home, Brandy would come from there and help Mom pick the beetles from her roses, tell her if she'd not gone and got herself too fine to keep some chickens, there'd be no beetles there to pick. <laughs> but we weren't the sort of family that circled back to what got left behind. And though it's true that home is whatever is what I call whatever hill town my parents were in until they weren't, home got boxed up in a moving van from time to time, houses and towns discarded, snakeskin by the side of the road. So later, when my granny told me what she thought I already knew, that I didn't live up north, I only worked there, <laughs> I set her straight. I will never move back home. Okay, next story. It's hard when they're all the same name. <laughs> you my mother canceled her newspaper subscription when for the second time that ice-swabbed winter delivery was delayed? I think about this while my husband labors to repair on my computer those things invisible I never knew I needed till they failed me. And how I wake at night the chatter at the open window of my brain she did he said they never will. My father held his grudges close or substitute for love, his alcoholic father never turned his way. When hurt is all that's handed down, you learn to claim it. And so I see you, friend, inside the poem you sent me, kneeling in your spring damp garden, gloves on your quick hands. You pull leaves from last year's Lenten roses, looking for the middle way my family never found to let it live what's tender green inside, to let them go before they cut too deep those jagged bits of what's already gone. I think I have two more stories, and then I'll end with that. story my mother liked to tell to company how when grandpa's daddy Felix died that thin night October 31st up on his mountain the animals all threw a fit the scream of mountain lions wolves and bears howling whatever kind of clamor wolves and bears make the next day tracks led to his cabin door my mother told it better I was a town kid what did I know of wild she said he was a hunter, and I asked, were they happy he was dead? <laughs> no, she said, they were showing him their honor. But why? My favorite question. I liked the story of how when it was time for Deli, the least one, to marry, Felix sent the word out, and the men came, hats in hand. He had them toss those hats into the open fire, sent the girl home with the one whose didn't burn. That story I understood. Like in all the tales, woman is the prize for whatever man or beast outsmarts the king. My mother loved her grandpa more than I loved mine. He was the tallest in any picture, though we only had the one holding his Bible, his wife Rebecca in a flowered dress down to her ankles. She died. It was his replacement wife that narrowed mom's eyes the one who hid the peppermints when she called down the holler for the kids to come and do her chores after she got Deli out of the way. I'd been read that story too, the evil second queen. It wasn't until later that I learned to read myself and do some math. 
Billy was 13 when she was carried off to be somebody's bride. 13, the age that I was too, the first tracks to and from my bed. And then the final story, and I'll, I'll, end, I'll end with this poem. What if, what if, I'll start again. <laughs> for the record, for Jeff's record, story. What I'm saying is, we've been stitched to this place a long time, and this place has always been complicated. Frayed seams are mended and ripped again. The stories I tell you now, embroidered patches, otherwise to mine. So here I sit, trying to piece a poem from my maternal line, a row of names like the begets. Ebbesine carried Elizabeth, carried Evelyn, carried Sarah, carried Etta, carried Marnie, carried me. Because we all know that most of what gets written is his story. Even their names uncarved, as on the stone that does not mark my father's mother's grave beneath rough grass and bramble at the cemetery's edge. Pauline. But right there on the internet is my first New World grandmother, Margaret Dawson, Jamestown, 1621. It doesn't get more American than that, with the plundering and the massacres, the first Africans enslaved. At 24 or 25, she left England as a good and faithful servant, a mail order bride before there was mail, to be wed for a price of 150 pounds of tobacco leaves. Her journey not made in the belly, not made chained in the belly of the great white wooden wart, like those others erased. My DNA traces Cameroon, Congo, the southern Bantu. I have no claim to those I carry. Margaret outlived three husbands and left to my many great grandfather two, two households with all movables and unmovables, including one yearling and heifer, one Negro woman, and all their increase, to be his and his heirs forever. Nine generations later, Leslie County, Kentucky, Nancy Lewis and her Civil War widow appeal was down to one cow, two hogs, barred and milled plow. At least nobody owned anyone anymore. My mother, when she died, owned the family graveyard, though she had lost the deed and made us promise not to plant her there. What I'm saying? I come from what's sown too deep in the seams, 